Boo. Hi guys, it's Katie Cable, and I'm here with little Olive. And today's topic on our food series is helping pets that suffer from allergies. So every single day, somebody comes in and says, oh my gosh, my pet has the worst allergies. I need to get a new food. And while food very well may be the culprit, oftentimes it's something other than than the food that is contributing. What you first want to do, regardless of, of the issue, is you're not going to like me for this, but I recommend doing a thorough, thorough cleaning. But if you have carpeted, carpeting, I would recommend you have a company come in and thoroughly steam clean all your carpets and rugs with a steamer. I know you can pick up at PetSmart. They have carpet cleaners and machines here that do an excellent job and some products that are um, non-toxic and safe for pets. So look into that. And if you have hard floors, same thing. Just give them a good sweep. You can use something as mild as just um, distilled vinegar to clean and give everything a good clean. The other thing you want to be mindful of is take a look online and make sure that you know the air quality, the pollen counts. We just had a disastrous year of a lot of rain after a drought and when that went away we had just the whole area blanketed in pollen so a lot of otherwise healthy dogs like this one got severe allergies just because of this unusual amount of pollen. So if that is the case, what you can do is keep your windows closed at night and early in the morning and just run an air conditioner or a fan. And also don't take your pet out if the pollen count and ragweed and all of the allergens are high or if it's particularly windy. One of the best things you can do for your pet is to grab I like Earth Bath. This is a great hyperallergenic shampoo. And um, they also have another one, the Burt's Bees hyperallergenic shampoo. A lot of people love oatmeal shampoos, and those can be great, but if you have a pet that's having some allergic reactions and sensitivity, I would stay away from putting a grain directly on their coat and stick to something that's hyperallergenic, that's fragrance free, no dyes, chemicals, it's very gentle. And you can give your pet a good brush after they come in and a good wash and just get everything off those coats. And also a great thing that I do is I just take a little bit of the shampoo, I put it in my palm and I just, just give them a foot soak and I clean their paws and their little bottoms where they've gone potty and um, wash that off every time we come in. Those things alone should just alleviate a lot of the problems. Uh, also, what you can do is get either a special solution from your vet that treats yeast or allergens and is a safe wash, or you can dilute the uh, shampoos and just get Get in there and there's wrinkle folds. If you have bulldogs, pugs, Frenchies, clean all in here. If you find it's black, that could be a sign of allergies. Also make sure, smell and clean their ears. Make sure there's no brown gunk. Keep them really clean. And those can also be a sign of allergies. So be mindful of that and try to keep them dry and clean. So now we're gonna move on to things you can do with your food. When it comes to food, the top allergens for pets are chicken and beef. So most people wanna stay away from those, but I have to tell you that the quality and the ratios of the chicken and beef can play a huge part in how sensitive your dog is. If you're using a, a dried kibble, that alone is a highly processed, it's loaded with a lot more starches, carbs, and preservatives than even a canned food. So that can make a dog that's already sensitive more so. So first look at the quality and sourcing, and if you are feeding a dry food, I would recommend that you start adding some wet canned food or fresh raw food to the kibble. 
and see if that doesn't help if you can slowly cut back on dry food to a more moisture rich uh, natural pet food. Some of the best um, proteins would be to stick to one protein. If you read the bag, a lot of the proteins have multiple turkey, chicken, fig, a, a whole variety of animal, fish, poultry proteins. Stick to one and uh, typically the best ones for allergies and sensitive pets are turkey and also lamb. So try those out, but then also look at the bag, look at those carbs, make sure that the first two or three ingredients are the good animal meats and not potatoes, rice. Even if it says grain free, corn isn't a grain, it's gluten free. Rice isn't a grain, potatoes aren't a grain, but all of those can have just as many carbs and can cause sensitivities. So really go easy on those carbs right now. I love the Nulo turkey. This is a moist, this is what I put all of my really highly sensitive pets on. It's a single protein, it's just turkey. Uh, turkey, turkey meat, turkey organs, and then it has some sweet potatoes, which are very gentle fiber, but not so many that it's gonna throw them off the charts with carbs. So this can make a great food, either as an add-in while you're transitioning or just in its entirety. Um, also, they have uh, this same brand, the Core Wellness. This is an all-white fish food. And then there's also a lot of varieties of lamb. But again, um, you want to read the label and if it's lamb and there's also chicken or other proteins, I would maybe stick to one that is just one protein. Now regardless of what you're feeding, I like to add a little bit of organic coconut oil half a teaspoon for every 10 pounds of weight. That can do a lot of great things for your pets, boosting up their immune system and keeping the allergies at bay. Also, you can use it topically. If they have hot spots, their coats are dry and flaky, you need some ear cleaner or um, brush their teeth in a pinch. Coconut oil, I have a whole blog on that. It's such wonderful stuff. Uh, there are an abundance of products you can pick up here at PetSmart, different fish oil supplements, but I prefer to just use these, uh, any kind of sardine or anchovy, as long as it's in spring water or olive oil. I do about one of these a week as um, a little, instead of a vitamin supplement, I'd rather feed them a treat that's nutritious, and this will also help build up their system and help with allergies. Your vet can run a simple test and find out exactly what triggers and allergies your pet has with a simple blood test and that might be the easier way to go. But hopefully these tips will get you well on your way and you'll find that by being a little more cautious during peak allergy seasons, you're A-OK -okay, good to go. Hope that helped. I appreciate you watching. Again, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, Katie Cable, at The Weekly Runt, or you can check out all of my various blogs, www.weeklyrunt.weebly.com. Thanks for tuning in. Pugs and kisses until next time.